Welcome to Learn Electrics and this video on how to install a forward and reverse changeover switch to a single phase motor circuit. Customers have sometimes asked the question, can we have a switch that makes the motor rotate forwards or backwards without having to take the motor to pieces every time? The answer of course is yes and this can be done very easily. Using a drum switch we can install a new circuit with forward and reverse switching or we can convert an existing fixed direction motor to have forward and reverse switching. Drum switches or barrel switches come in many types and styles but they should all have three switch positions and these are forwards and reverse and of course an essential off position. We should never switch a motor from forward to reverse without first letting it stop rotating. And of course the same is true from reverse to forwards. Put it in off first and let it stop. The new switch will replace the fixed links on the motor block. These fixed links determine the direction of rotation of the motor but they need to be physically removed and replaced in a new position each time there is a direction change needed. This is a job for an electrician every time and takes up valuable work time for your customer. Hence the advantage of installing a forward and reverse switch to the motor. Before you do any work on a motor circuit carry out safe isolation and lock off the circuit and allow capacitors enough time to discharge properly and this can take 30 to 60 seconds from switching off. Touching the terminals of a fully charged capacitor is certainly an attention grabbing experience. You will recall from an earlier video called single phase motors the position of the links on the motor block and these two drawings here show the configuration for forward direction. The only difference between them is the physical position of the neutral cable although this is electrically the same point. Here we have the drawings for the reverse direction. They are almost the same as the previous slide except that the two links are in a different position. These are the links that must be repositioned each time there is a change of rotation needed. Installing a switch will make this constant changing unnecessary. There are many different types of switch and motor and we just show here a typical example. The first thing we should do is to prepare the motor block. Start with removing the two links. These will not be needed now and should be stored somewhere safe. Now position the incoming supply on the correct motor block terminals. If you followed our recent video this will require the phase or live to be connected to the Z2 terminal and the neutral to the V1 terminal as shown here. There will be some extra wires on the motor block that go to the run and start capacitors and to the centrifugal switch on the rotor shaft. Leave these in the same positions. Do not remove them. Let's now look at the drum switch. Shown here is a typical drum switch. Many types are available with numerous patterns of contacts. Be certain of how your switch operates. Which contacts are straight through contacts and which ones are crossover contacts for each switch position. I always continuity test each type of new switch to be certain and write down which are the correct contacts for reference when connecting the wires. We have shown here a typical switch. One pair of contacts is permanently a straight through connection shown by the red dotted line. But there are also four contacts that perform the required crossover connections and these are shown by the orange and blue dotted lines. These connections are made internally within the switch and cannot be seen so we need to test to know. Looking at these contacts we can see that in the forward direction we have a straight through arrangement 1 to 2, 3 to 4 and 7 to 8. In a reverse direction 1 still goes to 2 but the other 4 will cross over 3 to 8 and 7 to 4 and in the off position nothing is connected to anything else. Always check your own switch contact arrangements. As we said, there are many types by many manufacturers. 
It often helps to sketch the switch arrangement and draw in the contacts as you test them, as I have done here. Trust the pencil, not your memory. So now we can start connecting the new switch to the motor block. As already mentioned, do not remove the wiring to the capacitors or centrifugal switch. Only the links should be removed. After removing the links, you should reconnect the incoming phase to the Z2 terminal and the neutral to the V1 terminal. An earth or CPC connection must also be supplied to the metallic parts of the circuit, the motor, the switch, etc. But from this point on, we will leave the capacitor connections off the drawings for clarity and we will also leave the earth connections off the drawings. But remember, they are there in real life. Now, start connecting the wires from the motor block to the switch. Connect the phase wire from Z2 to contact number 3 of our switch and the neutral to contact number 7. It is very important that the phase and neutral are on the same side of the switch. Now we can connect U1 on the motor block to contact 4 on the switch and U2 on the motor to contact number 8 of the switch. U1 should be opposite the phase and U2 opposite the neutral. And that is it, job done. Our finished wiring connections should look like this. Remember, we have left the capacitor and earth connections off the drawings for clarity. Let's now look at the wiring route in the various switch positions, starting with the off position. In the off position, none of the contacts are connected to each other, and in that position, the motor is turned off. There is, however, still live electric inside the motor and the switch, but there is no longer a completed path for current to flow. Now, what happens if we choose the forwards position? Visually, the only change is that the selector arm has changed position. All the contact changes have taken place internally. If we could see inside the switch, we would see that the straight through connections have been made, as shown here by the dotted lines, the internal connections. Phase connects to U1 and neutral to U2. And hopefully the motor turns in the forwards direction. Let us put the motor into reverse now. Again, the only visual change is the selector arm, but what has happened inside the switch? The dotted lines show the internal crossover connections. Phase is now connected to U2 and neutral to U1. The motor will turn in the reverse direction. And that is all there is to it. We can also consider now two variations that are very easy to do. First, how would we wire up the drum switch if the motor and switch were both part of a new installation and we wanted to take the incoming supply straight to the switch and not the motor? Now we will connect the incoming phase to contact number 3 of the switch, in our example, and the incoming neutral to contact number 7 of the switch. Don't forget to take the earth to the switch and to the motor. The second variation is when the drum switch says forwards and the motor is moving in reverse for the customer's expectations. And when in reverse, the customer says that that is his forwards direction. So if the motor direction does not match your switch positions, this can easily be changed. But do remember safe isolation and lock off before working on any electrical circuits. All we need to do is to change the U1 and U2 connections over, shown here by the two yellow arrows. Do not change the phase and neutral. And hey presto, the switching directions have been changed. A little summary of what we have done. Installing a forward off reverse switch is easily achieved. Always lock off and safely isolate before starting work. Draw or photograph the existing wiring arrangements first. That way you can always get back to where you started. Leave the existing capacitors and centrifugal switch in position. Connect the phase and neutral as shown, as required. Check which contacts are the changeover contacts and connect the wires between the switch and the motor block. And that is it. Installing a forward and reverse switch really is a simple task. 
As always, proper preparation is essential. We hope that you enjoyed this video from Learn the Electrics and that your mental toolbox is a little richer after watching the video. We will also leave a link to our earlier video, Single Phase Motors, in the description to this video. If you haven't done so already, please click on subscribe below to have access to all of our videos and please press the notify button to be sure of not missing our next video. Subscribing also helps us too and we really do appreciate this. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all of our videos at any time. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.